Hello and thank you for joining us again on the channel. Night Guy here, uh, doing another weapons, uh, training weapons review. Uh, mainly uh, the polymer uh, plastic weapon series for our, what we call our synthetic training days. Um, I have in front of you my most used uh, four training swords. Well, most used three training swords, I should say. One of these is brand new. Uh, right here, I just received in a cold steel arming sword. Uh, you know, bastard arming sword, I guess you could say. Um, I don't, I don't remember if they labeled it as a single handed or hand and a half. To me, this feels more like a, I guess a hand and a half. So I guess single handed sword would be a better way to describe it. Um, you can see there, cold steel. Um, anyhow, this one is currently brand new um, I haven't tested this one out yet in training um, but I'm looking forward to it um, however Tiger Ninja has me and him did an exchange uh, using my current favorite training sword which is actually this one here this is the cold steel uh, hand and a half bastard sword I guess you could say um, right there you see this one is definitely scuffed up this one has definitely seen its fair share of training and battles already and uh, hopefully it'll see many many more um, anyway he was using this particular piece I was using this one I'm gonna show you guys a little side-by-side -side comparison there you could see the uh, you know differences let me do one at a time in the guard and hilt design this one the guard is a little bit shorter on the uh, the newer model that I just received plus the pommel design is a little different uh, this one I believe up top here they call a scent stopper or teardrop I want to say whereas the bottom one is a ring disc pommel um, personally so far I like both styles. Um, I really, you know, I'm, I'm really torn as to which one I like better. Um, I don't mean of the swords, I just mean of the, the pommels. You know, whether I like the ring styled or the uh, scent stopper or teardrop, I guess you could call it. I'm not sure if that's right. If anyone knows the correct names, please let me know. But um, that's the pommel, as far as the pommels are concerned. However, um, for training purposes, I prefer this one just because I normally prefer a two-handed sword. I could get both of my hands on this blade relatively easy. Uh, if I come down here to grab, it's even easier. It allows me room to kind of thumb the blade and work the short blade as well as the long blade when I'm training. Um, I clashed this one against Tiger Ninja's uh, training sword he just received. Um, we, we didn't get to do any recording, unfortunately, on that one. If you guys want to see us train with these two, please let us let me know. Let us know. We'll definitely uh, put on some matches for you guys. Um, anyhow, um, in the match, it went well. Um, both the weapons performed exceptionally. Um, I did get to get my hands on his, uh, you know, training sword. This, this particular model, but his. This is mine. It's brand new. I haven't used it yet. Um, but using his, which is an identical piece, um, it worked great. Um, can't complain. It, it, it functioned very well. You know, um, I thought that I would lose out because of the leverage, the extra added leverage you'd get from having a longer handle. Whereas, um, this one does clearly have a shorter handle. It didn't really matter too much. Just the way this one is balanced. Uh, kind of makes up for it. It has a little more of a forward swing Which uh, you may or may not like in your training swords um, But it, it, it helped uh, you know Cancel out some of the extra force that uh, he was getting when he was using this particular model with both hands getting the extra leverage um, I'm pretty confident he ordered in one of these for himself that he's gonna be using um, I, I can't wait to see what he gets that uh, we've been you know trying to refine ourselves a little more and, and get more used to specific training tools 
you know, meaning that uh, every time we, we pick up our training swords, we tend to use the same one, uh, you know, week in and week out. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's hard to find time to get enough training, as always, you know, with working. But we manage still. Anyways, um, these are my four favorite. Um, the cold steel options are, I'm going to say, the best. I consider them to be superior. Um, I've mentioned before, people give them mixed reviews. Uh, being that they're too uh, hard, they call them clubs. Um, you know, I personally think the extra added firmness in these training tools is a great thing because they won't quit. I've mentioned that time and time again. Um, this one has taken plenty of a beating, and you'll see there's little to no damage, just some scuff marks running up and down the blade. The guard here is, you know, just scuffed up, but no cracks or damage. Uh, in my previous video, I showed the training boken that I started with. Um, if you could check out, if you want to check that out in my uh, Oboken unboxing video, I uh, showed my first uh, training cold steel boken, and the guard on that definitely cracked. But it's a very thin uh, ring ring guard for the suba that they use. Whereas you can see these bad boys are nice and thick and hefty. Um, not all training swords are made the same. These other two pieces I have here are, uh, I, I, I'd call them jobbers. Um, I, I do really thoroughly enjoy using these. I definitely have used them a lot. Uh, but you can see here, for example, uh, the guard broke right here. Um, you know, I was training and uh, Tiger Ninja came in with a good uh, strike. I believe he was using this particular sword and it broke. Um, I do like these. Uh, made in Taiwan. I don't remember the maker. What was the name of the maker on these? I do enjoy that they have, you know, a little more elaborate design on the handle than the cold steel swords really have been giving you. Um, you know, this has like a double fuller, which you could see it's kind of engraved in here, whereas the plastic was smooth. Now it's all scuffed up. Um, you know, that that's really, really cool. But my main complaint about these is that they're a little bit, f not flimsy, but pliable, which is typically great in a training weapon, because normally pliability means, you know, uh, the weapon won't break. However, with a pliable weapon, um, I've noticed when you're exchanging, sometimes a stiffer blade will just kind of push your blade to the side if your blade is too pliable. Uh, whenever you make contact, that you bind. And, um, you know, it's a little bit of a pain. Here's the other training longsword that I really enjoy using. And this one, I'm just, I was always in awe with the aesthetics on this one. Look at that design. Same sort of groove, has a fuller running down with flames. You know, you, you can't beat how cool this thing looks. Nice uh, cross guard section there, you can see that. Little diamond etchings and everything. Uh, even have some engra cool engravings on the handle. This little like band design going there with, uh, I guess, another scent stopper pommel. Please correct me if I'm wrong out there. If you know, it even has little engravings on the pommel. But once again, this is a pretty flimsy blade. Now, I will say that uh, in its defense, this training sword is far lighter than both of these, um, which is very nice. However, uh, in my training matches out here with Tiger Ninja, uh, even um, the Axeman from Tree Timber came out to train with us, and he used uh, some of these. Um, I, I, I don't know. I believe he used this one primarily. Um, I think I let him use this one a time or two, but he mentioned he didn't like the weight on it. So, um, you know, he went back to training with this one for a while. And then he ended up actually just favoring the Boken. That's his favorite just because of how light it is. Um, so, you know, the complaints typically on the cold steel is that they're a little bit heavy. But overall durability, you know, I'm going to say that's kind of the give and take. Um, they're a little bit rigid. 